was the mistake heard around the universe. On December 20th, the 2015 Miss Universe pageant was broadcast live on televisions everywhere. Every woman from their respective country was competing for the coveted title of Miss Universe. The host of the event, Family Feud Steve Harvey, and the two remaining contestants, Miss Colombia Ariana Gutierrez and Miss Philippines Pia Alonzo Wurzbach, stood on stage in anticipation of the results. Harvey read the card and announced that Miss Colombia was the winner. The crowd cheered and the $300,000 diamond crown was placed upon her head. The problem? Steve Harvey read the wrong name. There was confusion and panic behind the scenes while Miss Gutierrez waved the Colombian flag on stage. After what seemed like an eternity, Steve was ushered back on stage to say that there had been a terrible mistake and that the actual winner was Miss Philippines. The crowd cheered once again as Miss Wartzback shuffled forward. She was shocked yet pleasantly surprised. The diamond crown was then transferred to Wurzbach's head, which would serve as the climax of this event's intensely awkward situation. Harvey offered more apologies and took full responsibility for the flub before strolling off the stage in embarrassment. Days after the incident, Harvey would explain that he was confused about the format of the card and the teleprompter. He claimed that the way the card was printed was not the way that it was presented in rehearsal. Although he had an outpouring of support from fellow celebrities, he was also the butt of many jokes and hilarious internet memes. He also received a litany of death threats from many disgruntled Colombians. But Steve took it all in stride, as he even poked fun at himself in a tweet posted on Christmas Day. Harvey invited Miss Columbia on his talk show, where he got a little emotional, and apologized profusely to her for his mistake. This was arguably the most epic nip slip of all time. Janet Jackson was the chosen artist for the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show. Millions of people across America tuned in and watched the performance live on TV. At the end of one of Jackson's medley of hits, pop star Justin Timberlake popped up through the floor and began singing his song entitled Rock Your Body. The duet paraded across the stage while at the same time acting out sexually suggestive dance moves. As Timberlake sang his final line, gonna get you naked by the end of this song, he reached across Jackson's bosom and pulled off a part of her costume. Unfortunately, he exposed her right breast that was partially covered by a metal nipple shield. The camera quickly panned to the crowded stadium, but not quick enough. 140 million people saw the bare breast for about half a second, and a lot of them were furious. The FCC received nearly 540,000 complaints from viewers of the halftime show. The event also led to much media controversy and headlines in which it was sometimes referred to as Nipplegate. Jackson's representative explained the incident, saying Justin was only supposed to pull away the rubber bustier to reveal a red lace bra. The garment collapsed and her breast was accidentally revealed. Because of this wardrobe mal malfunction, the FCC has cracked down on incidents of indecent exposure on TV, increasing fines from $27,000 to $325,000. Jackson's nip slip also led to the widespread use of five-second delays on most live broadcasted performances. Subsequently, Jackson's career would be affected by this incident, leading to her music being blacklisted from radio and television. The 2010 season of Australia's Next Top Model was coming to a close, and it was time to announce the winner. The two remaining contestants, Kelsey and Amanda, stood on stage in front of an audience of over 2,000 people. It was also being broadcast live to hundreds of thousands of television sets across Australia. The host, Sarah Murdoch, was going to forego the tradition of reading the results from a card and instead chose to use an earpiece. Murdoch waited for the results from the producer. When she didn't get an answer, she decided to go with the last thing that she heard through her earpiece. She announced that Kelsey was the winner. An overjoyed Kelsey started to thank all of the people who helped her on her journey as Amanda just awkwardly hung around waiting to be given direction. After about 45 seconds of celebration, Murdoch was then told via cue card that Amanda was in fact the winner. Apparently, her earpiece had lost communication with the show's producers and the last thing she heard was, Kelsey won, Amanda two. Murdoch stood in disbelief over the whole ordeal and tried to hide her face behind her hand. With the now dead silent crowd, Murdoch eventually announced that Amanda was indeed the winner. After the initial shock wore off, both women graciously accepted the results and hugged one another on stage. Murdoch, still apologizing about the gaffe, tugged at the waistline of Kelsey in hopes of comforting her. After the show, Kelsey was awarded $25,000 as an apology for the mistake.
you really need to be careful what you do on live TV. You never know when the camera is being pointed at you. BBC weatherman Tomas Schaffernacher learned that the hard way. In 2010, his co-anchor Simon McCoy was about to segue into the weather report. Before doing so, Simon dished out a little light-hearted banter towards Schaffernacher. He joked that the weather report would be 100% accurate and would provide all the detail that one could possibly want. The camera quickly cut over to Schaffernacher, who did not realize that he was being broadcast live. He was clearly seen raising his middle finger to McCoy in a well-understood gesture. Upon realizing his mistake, he pulled his hand back to awkwardly cover his mouth. During that split second, he jerked his hand around his face, not knowing what to do. The camera then returned back to McCoy, where he stated, Every now and then there's always one mistake, that was it. And then he casually went on into the next story. A BBC spokesperson said that the corporation received several complaints. She stated that Tamas was not aware that he was on air and whilst the gesture was only shown for a second, it was not acceptable. In the coming weeks, the station would experience what they described as labor cuts. Not surprisingly, Schaffernacher was one of the people who were laid off. AJ Clemente was a news anchor for KFYR of Bismarck, North Dakota. He was fired just after one day of work for uttering some extremely profane language live on air. Right before his co-anchor was set to introduce him, he whispers the words, Fucking shit. At that point, no one in the studio, not even his co-anchor, knew that his mic was live, transmitting the profanity to the homes of shocked viewers. AJ was trying to pronounce the name of London Marathon winner Sugye Kabere. He couldn't figure it out and started cursing to himself out of frustration and nervousness. He didn't know until the third break that his potty mouth was caught live on TV. That's when the show's producer told him to go home for the day. The next day, he met with the studio manager and was fired for his live TV expletives. Videos of the incident made its way around the internet which made him an overnight sensation. He was interviewed on the Today Show, live with Kelly and Michael, and even the Late Show with David Letterman. After he made his rounds on the TV talk show circuit, he went home to New York and worked as a bartender for a while. He is now working as a media instructor for students who want to get into broadcast journalism. He's obviously teaching them what not to say while on air. <laughs> 